Let me, let me share my screen. All right, and come over here to, boom, okay. What is the value, uh, this is problem number seven. What's the value of the expression? This over. What's the value of the expression when 24 minus five, the absolute value of that is subtracted from negative, at the absolute value of negative 26 plus 30. They ask this in such a stupid way because you have to kind of rearrange it. You have to put this first, right? And then subtract this, okay? So negative 26 plus 30 is um, four, right? And the absolute value of four is four minus uh, the absolute value of 24 minus 5, well, that's 19. So the absolute value of 4 minus the absolute value of 19 is 4 minus 19. And then 4 minus 19 is negative 15. What's tricky is that you get a negative answer, even though there's a lot of absolute value involved there. Okay, because at the end after you simplify those parentheses and becomes negative. You better, you, you betcha, do they have a really nice distractor here of positive 15. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, it's it's tough only because it's it's unintentionally tricky. No, it's intentionally tricky, they do that. Okay, here, this is a great problem and I love it. Given that today is Tuesday, what day of the week will it be 263 days from now? Okay, um, here's, here's how I approach the problem. I said that if we take 263 and divide it by seven, okay, because every seven days, it's gonna be Tuesday, no matter what year it is. Um, so when I divide 263 by seven, the whole number part that I get of it is 37. Okay. The, the side conversations are gonna be in the video, so can we, thanks. Okay, so that's the whole number part that I get. And then I multiply seven times 37 and I get 259, okay? So this is kind of an interpreting the remainder problem. They are taking you all the way back to this was a standard that you had to cover in the fifth grade, but it's kind of um, like that on steroids. Again, critical thinking. Okay, so we need to go four days later than Tuesday. If today is Tuesday, then the next day, one day plus one day is going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Can someone grab the door for me, please? Okay. So we're adding one day, two, two days, three days, and four days, and we land on Saturday. Is that the answer that you got? Mm -hmm. They don't. I, I because again, critical thinking test, not a math test. It's, it's really what we're doing here is interpreting the remainder. Um, there are a lot of questions on tests sometimes about how many, okay, how many pack boxes do you need to buy? And if there was a remainder here, well, of course, you're going to have to round up. You're going to have to buy 38 boxes because you can't buy 37 and a half boxes or, um, but again, the whole point of this is how good are you at critical thinking? Okay. If you don't remember scientific notation, you can use your calculator for this, kiddos. You could literally put in your calculator 5.2 times 10 to the third plus 2.1 times 10 to the fourth, okay? It's gonna give you an answer, not in scientific notation, but it'll give you an answer of 2,000, or excuse me, 26,200. And then you just have to find the one. Well, only one of them has that at the beginning. 
10 to the fourth is a one and four zeros. So if you multiply that and move the decimal place four over, you get 26,200. Okay, that's one way to do it. But um, if you remember scientific notation, I know it's been a minute, this was in eighth grade, um, a thing you did in eighth grade. Um, we need to, in order to add uh, scientific in scientific notation, we have to have them, uh, they have to have the same uh, second part here. Um, so what I did was in order to make this smaller, I changed this and you can change either one, but I liked to do it that way, if that's okay. And then I kind of go back and I check, I check myself and I change this. I, I, I multiply this times a thousand and multiply that times 10,000 and I get the same number. So I know I did it right. Plus 2.1 times 10 to the fourth. And then I'll 2.1 plus 0 0.52 is 2.62 times 10 to the fourth power. The hardest part there is changing them to the same, um, to the number in scientific notation that can be added to each other, but then it's really faster. But hey, use your calculator. No problem with that either. You can also just use your calculator to double check. All right. I like this next problem only because this is something that kids struggle with a whole lot. It combining two horrible things. Okay. First of all, everybody hates absolute value equations and they hate inequalities. But because the solution set is here graphically, you could just kind of pick numbers and let's see what works. Okay, empty set means there's no solution. The only time you're gonna have no solution is if this says the absolute value is gonna be equal to something that's a negative number. That's not happening. So let's just start picking test points and plugging them in. This says it's a number less than or equal to negative seven. Can I pick? Um, I'm gonna pick negative 10 because negative 10 is down here. I'm gonna plug it into this equation. And I'm gonna see if it works. If, if one test point in the shaded region works, then the whole thing is true. But we've got, uh, this one's got two regions, so we gotta be careful. If, if it might, it might be this one, if this one works. So I'm plugging it in here. The absolute value of negative 10 plus two is less than or equal to five. So that would be negative eight. The absolute value of negative eight is less than five, less than or equal to. Well, eight is less than five. That's not true. It's not this answer. I can go ahead and eliminate this answer because it contains that piece there. So it can't be true because that one has to both be and those answers. I'm gonna pick a number that's greater than three and test this, this point. Is five okay? Let's, um, I'll put it in purple. I'm gonna pick a test point of five. So the absolute value of five plus two is less than or equal to five. All right, well, that's the absolute value of seven, which is seven is less than or equal to five. Boom, that's wrong, okay? Let's pick a test point in here and zero is my favorite test point of all time because it's the easiest um, number to plug in. So the absolute value of two because zero plus two is two, right? Is less than five. The absolute value of two is two. Two is less than five, boom. There's my answer. We didn't even solve the absolute value. I could teach you the whole split, solve, check, blah, 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 but that's faster. Multiple choice tests have different strategies and they know that. That's why they only give you a minute for it. So if this one's hard for you, pick one and move on. If you can eliminate a couple, great. Okay, let's keep her rolling. Oh, what's the value? So this again has some absolute value pieces to it here, all right? So without rewriting the problem, I'm just gonna move it down here. So I've got the absolute value of negative 15 minus three. I gotta work inside there like they're parentheses. 15 minus three is negative 18, okay? Plus the absolute value of negative 20 plus six. 
So uh, 20 plus 6. It, negative 20 plus 6 is 14. The absolute value uh, is, is negative 14 plus 14. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 32. Boom. Okay. And so that's up to number 11. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen, stop the video.